Hey everyone, Enra Silver here, and welcome to the first episode of Glitch Slapped by Enra. If you're thinking this series will be about glitching, well, give yourself a gold star. I'll be looking at glitching in general, but let's face it, there are a ton of fantastic tutorials out there about how to glitch, and I'll link a couple in the description. However, this series will be more of a deep dive into glitching, and we're going to start with Blender Glitching. Why start with Blender Glitching, you ask? Well, as far as I've been able to determine, no resource exists like what I'm going to present you with today. Beeblebum has an excellent tutorial that I'm linking on screen now, where he covers how to manipulate connection points, but I've been unable to find anything about how each piece individually orients on a connection point. So I made one from scratch. At the end of this episode, I'll show you a quick and easy way to overcome one of the biggest drawbacks to Blender Glitching. But first, let's start with a quick review of specifically what a Blender Glitch is. A Blender Glitch is used to place a piece on a connection point regardless of any other factors. Room, limits on specific number of pieces allowed in a base, limit on where a piece can be placed on terrain, etc. To perform a blender glitch, you must first select the piece that you want to place. Once it's selected, you need to hold down L2, on the PlayStation anyway, to enter the delete menu. This menu will stay active as long as you are holding down the trigger and has four options. First will be to delete the piece, but you'll also have the option to color the piece, attach a wire to a connection point, or report the base. Use the D-pad to move to the wire option and then put your cursor over any connection point not attached to the point you're wanting to place the piece on. Press R2 to attach a wire to that point, then while continuing to hold down L2, use your cursor to drag the wire to the point you're wanting to glitch the piece onto. Now, while releasing the L2 button, hit R2 again, and if your timing's right, you'll place the piece you had originally selected in the menu onto the connection point. If you're struggling with the timing, I will have several videos linked in the description that show the builder's actual hand movements on the controller when glitching. Now, what makes a blender glitch unique and very useful is that every piece in the game glitches onto a connection point with a specific orientation that never changes. This allows you to control direction and facing of the piece simply by manipulating the orientation of the connection point. This is common knowledge to most builders, but I wanted to know ahead of time how pieces would respond so I could plan out builds better instead of getting halfway through a build and finding out a piece didn't glitch in the way I was expecting. So I spent several weeks here at my R&D base glitching every piece in the game onto a connection point, screenshotting the glitch, and then comparing each one. Since this was uncharted territory for me, I created my own terms for how each piece glitched in. Several trends started to emerge once I began to group pieces according to how they behaved on a connection point. I found that piece orientation varied in three areas. Orientation with the outer circle of the connection point, orientation with the lightning bolt in the center of the circle, and orientation with the source of the connection point. So without further ado, let's go over the terms that I'll be using. Now here's the connection point. There are two parts to it, the outer circle and the inner lightning bolt, if you will. Now, in relation to the outer circle of the connection point, pieces glitch in either parallel or perpendicular. Next, in terms of relation to the lightning bolt, pieces glitch in either pointed towards the fat end of the lightning bolt, towards the thin end of the lightning bolt, or centered on the lightning bolt. Finally, in terms of relation to the source of the connection point, pieces glitch in with the connection point in the middle of the piece, or on the edge of the piece. If on the edge, the body of the piece will head towards or away from the source. Now the source of a connection point is the piece if the point is part of a build item. If the point is a wire, then its source is wherever the wire is pulled from. Once I had these terms defined, I then grouped every piece in the game into categories depending on how they glitched in. I compiled everything into an Excel document and this document is linked in the description. The first tab of the spreadsheet reviews the definition of all the terms, and all subsequent tabs are different groups of items. Each group of items spreadsheet will have a list of all the items in column A, as well as a cross in line 1. The line across will have pics of each item glitched onto a light floor for the visual learners. The list in column A is for quick reference. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoop-de-doo, you made a table. Now what? 
now is when things get interesting. You see, even if pieces are in wildly different menus, if they glitch in in similar ways, you can stack them on a glitch point and create some really unique looks. Now in subsequent episodes of Glitch Slapped by Enra, I'll be going over each of the groups and showing you a few of the funky looks I've come up with. But in today's episode, we'll start by looking at the biggest group. Of the 290 pieces entered in the spreadsheet, over half, 157 to be exact, glitch in with the parallel fat middle orientation. This means there are so many options for stacked glitches that I'd never be able to cover them all, so I'll just go over a few of my favorites. The first one is one I've used many times in the past, Blast Doors. To make a Blast Door, all you need to do is glitch a window and a power door onto the same point. You can change up the looks by switching construction materials, even mixing them together. A wood power door with a metal window is a personal favorite. And there we have it. When powered, we have a nice closed door with the window merged in nicely. And then when we remove the power, the door moves out of the way, and there's just the window there for you to look out of. Next, let's start by glitching a cuboid inner door onto the connection point. Now you can place a pill light right on the edge of the door jam, glitch a doorway onto the same connection point, and now the light is completely hidden but provides some great indirect illumination. Plus the juxtaposition of the circular cuboid door with the square wooden doorway is an excellent visual. For more fun with indirect lighting, we can start by glitching a wooden arch onto the connection point and placing pill lights on each support beam. Once you glitch a cuboid inner wall onto the same connection point, the pill lights are now hidden, but again provide great illumination. Another cool look can be achieved by glitching a cuboid wall onto the connection point, then a wooden small wall, and finally a pole light. I really like this look, so I expanded it a bit, and uh, yeah, me likey lots.
One last fun look involves curved cuboid roofs. Glitch one of these suckers onto a connection point, then glitch an aquarium inside, and finally a Pioneer Expedition flag for a sweet look. One thing I want to point out here is that anything you glitch inside has to have its own light source. Otherwise, anything inside just appears as a black outline since the curved cuboid roof lacks native interior lighting. Well, that's going to do it for episode one of Glitch Slapped by Enra. But I didn't forget my promise at the beginning of the video. One of the biggest problems with blender glitching is that if you're a fraction of a second early with your button press, you'll lay a wire instead of the piece. Depending on what you've got glitched onto the point, deleting the wire can cause everything glitched onto that point to delete as well. Very frustrating. However, you could prevent this very simply. Once your cursor is on the point you want to glitch on, but before you actually pull the trigger, move over to the report base option in the delete menu. If you're successful, you'll still glitch in the piece, but if your timing is off, you'll get an unable to report base message instead of placing a wire. Problem solved, thanks to the master Beeblebum. Now, while I go over my closing thoughts, if you've ever wondered what all the farmable plants in the game glitched onto the same point looked like, well, I've got your back. Here you go. Check back in a few days for the next episode. In episode 2, I'll continue going over funky looks I found with pieces in the parallel fat middle group. The Excel document is linked in the description. Not all the pictures are inserted yet, but I'm working on getting them all in. It's just time consuming. Feel free to download it and play around with combinations. Comment if you find something cool and I might include it in a future video. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is Enra Silver. I'll talk to you soon, and in the interim, may the glitch gods smile upon you.